We're in actually a, a pretty bad state of history for the fight against corruption because I tend to hear a lot about, I go to a lot of corruption, anti-corruption conferences and hear about other African experiences fighting corruption and there was a stage in which everyone set up anti-corruption commissions and had anti-corruption champions and that was the way they were going to fight corruption. And you had Nuhu Rubad in Rio and John Defongo in Kenya and Maxwell and Sinkhole in Zambia and places like that. They've all failed, these men. Um, they, you know, they, they're out of office, they're running NGOs, they've gone back, they've sort of been sacked, they've been prosecuted, they've gone back into government. Um, it was an experiment that failed. You can't deal with corruption by setting up a special little unit um, and fielding that problem there. And I think, you know, there is no magic bullet, no silver bullet. It is a series it has about changing the mentality and doing a series of really small, gradual steps as your nation state, which is young, finds its imagination. And it's things like you have to use your police, not undermine them. They have to be built up. They have to be given decent salaries. They have to be moral, uh, given a new sense of morale. You have to have a very vibrant press. You have to use social media. Um, you have to have anti-corruption NGOs. Um, and these are all small little things. And people have to be tried and fined and sacked and sent to prison. And it's a really slow little fight, bit by bit, but eventually that's the only way to change societies. There is no sweet formula. And I'm afraid shooting people just brings out in a military dictatorship, which then turns out to be more corrupt. As Wally was saying the other day, it just turns out to be more corrupt than civilians are.